dear all participants and uh, uh, dis distinguished uh, speakers, a very good afternoon. This is uh, my uh, appreciation to uh, Global Solar Council to, to invite me to speak in this very uh, important event uh, to ex exchange information regarding the solar uh, industries in its, uh, uh, its, its country. So, once uh, Mr. Prastava, if you could just full screen your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, let me start with uh, a bit introduction about the uh, IIC, the Indonesian Solar Energy Association. This association uh, was established in Jakarta, January 9, in 2018. And with the objective is to build communication forum with, and not networking among the members uh, of the stakeholders in solar industries in Indonesia to achieve a development in solar energy system that is a sustainable development. We have about 200 members of individuals, academicians, solar industry suppliers, EPC contractor, and also government uh, officers. Our activity actually, like uh, what we are doing right now, uh, participating in the webinar, also uh, giving uh, advocacy of solar energy policies to the government, or also uh, sharing or uh, um, uh, capacity building to the members uh, through workshops, seminar, training, exhibition, and kind of thing. And uh, this is just uh, to, to show how uh, ISC is positioned with uh, government and members. To the government, we uh, help or we assist government in advocating all the regulations to the members and uh, giving uh, uh, what do you call it uh, information about the 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 uh, the, the role the uh, the regulation that government uh, uh, provide. But uh, from the member, we uh, speak on behalf of the member about our interest and how to develop uh, solar energy industries in Indonesia and as well as, well also to, uh, as a platform of uh, sharing knowledge between the, mem uh, the member and uh, of course to make uh, uh, connection and uh, networking between the members. Okay, uh, I jump to the uh, renewable energy uh, target in Indonesia. Uh, like uh, what has been uh, uh, talk uh, 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 said with uh, from the ASEAN Center of Energy, Indonesia has a target of 23% uh, of uh, energy uh, mix coming from renewable energy next in uh, 2025. And within this 23%, uh, it uh, includes uh, solar energy. It's about, uh, well, less than 1%, but in terms of capacity, it's, so, it's supposed to be about uh, 6.5 gigawatt uh, solar photovoltaic installed uh, around the country in 2025. This is quite an ambitious target. And I think uh, we, uh, Indonesia, has a very a big homework and need to do really uh, hard to, to get achieve, uh, uh, to achieve the, uh, the target because uh, right now we are still under uh, under one gigawatt around the country so we need uh, to, to have uh, an acceleration program to uh, achieve the, uh, the target like what uh, we I, I provide this uh, unfortunately this is still in Indonesian but I can explain to you this is uh, the planning uh, year by year. The, the, the green one is the uh, general planning of uh, uh, electricity generation by the, our utility company, PLN. The additional, uh, additional uh, uh, capacity of solar energy actually uh, written in this table uh, in 2021 is about uh, 122 megawatt up to 2024. It's about 315 and the total during five years about 800 uh, megawatt uh, new installed capacity uh, using the utility company's uh, budget. 
But for other uh, sector like this one, this is uh, the sector of uh, utility on uh, state owned uh, company. Uh, I mean, the state owned company, not the uh, uh, the state owned. We have a lot of state owned company, and each state owned company has manufacturer, has has factory, has a building, and if we they 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 have plates that they want to, they will uh, they will be. Uh, installing solar rooftop in their building and it's account about 955 uh, megawatt during these five years. So uh, this add to the uh, another uh, target by the utility company. And the solar rooftop itself, APBN is uh, the, the state budget. So the one that uh, paid by the state's budget is about only uh, 100 megawatt. Uh, this one, 100, uh, 99 plus 10, so 100 megawatt. And but uh, uh, for the industries and uh, private uh, companies, it's about 271, uh, 217, I said, I should say. And the total uh, target uh, of the government from 2020 to 2024 is about another two gigawatt uh, installed capacity. Uh, adding to what we have right now is uh, uh, less than one gigawatt. Say, this is still uh, under the achievement, but uh, uh, this is, I think, uh, the more realistic target that we can uh, achieve uh, during this uh, past uh, the next uh, four years. And uh, this is uh, the the strategy uh, or or the, the area that uh, uh, the government would like to have. We have the large scale solar PV. It's it's uh, it's actually the IPP uh, project. So uh, this has uh, its own uh, challenges because the IPP project is uh, uh, intended to to bring down the uh, local electricity generation costs, which are uh, uh, most of the area in Indonesia, particularly outside of Java, is based on the. Uh, uh, high cost of diesel power, so uh, the government would like to see uh, the large photovoltaics uh, outside of the Java uh, will bring down the electricity generation cost. And also, uh, 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 the government would like to uh, ask also the mining uh, owners to to use the the abandoned mining area to to be used as the photovoltaic field. And uh, this will uh, add more uh, capacity of the photovoltaic field with hopefully a very low uh, land acquisition cost. So, so hopefully uh, we will have a low uh, electricity generating cost from the uh, photovoltaic. And the solar rooftop, we have two, we have uh, two program actually, the first is million solar rooftop initiative. Uh, this is, uh, um, I mean, uh, this is a private initiative uh, the association encourages people, house owner, building owners, to to install photovoltaic in their rooftop, and we uh, we targeted to about one gigawatt for the next uh, four years. So uh, hopefully, this also add another uh, capacity of solar photovoltaic to achieve the target. And uh, the the next one is the the floating solar PV. This is uh, the undergoing. Uh, project uh, in one of the uh, dam in uh, West Java. It's, it's going uh, to be a first uh, so, uh, largest uh, floating solar PV plant with 200 megawatt uh, capacity uh, and expected uh, to be going online, I think, for the next two years. And uh, other small uh, project is for the uh, solar PV for the underdeveloped area and isolated island as well as the outer island. Uh, of course, this is would, would be very small, small mic, uh, mini or micro uh, grid with uh, 100 kilowatt peak each of the area of the of the of the system to electrify the underdeveloped or isolated and outer outer island of Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia, uh, our association actually with uh, uh, our uh, uh, strategic partner, one of Indonesian NGO, the IESR, Indonesian Essential Service Reform, uh, proposed to the government to have a national program solar PV rooftop. Uh, 
uh, we call uh, Surya Nusantara. It's a little bit different with the uh, Milan Solar roof, uh, Rooftop because Milan Solar Rooftop will mobilize the uh, private funding, but uh, National Program Solar Rooftop, we propose to bundle with the uh, economic recovery st stimulus. So we, we, we are hoping that the government will provide uh, funding, not only to funding the project of uh, providing uh, photovoltaic, for low income and economically full name full people, but also uh, this to 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 encourage uh, uh, industries and business in uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, businesses. So the EPC can can work, the manufacturer can can you know, operate again, and so on and so forth. So this uh, hopefully this not only to increase the uh, population of solar photovoltaic, but also to, to move the, the, the economic uh, in the uh, industries of uh, photovoltaics by and large. And we, we targeted to, to have one gigawatt, gigawatt peak per year for another uh, two or three years. Why we choose the uh, solar photovoltaic? I think this is already a general uh, knowledge that uh, solar uh, rooftop is, uh, or photovoltaic is Modular, flexible in size, quick in installation, simple in technical. So it's it's very appropriate for a very quick uh, uh, deployment. This is uh, we do we do also have a very extreme price drop for the module. So this is also reduce uh, significantly the uh, uh, capital expenditure. So uh, we will have a very uh, competitive electricity hopefully. And also uh, this solar rooftop need not really high qualification of technicians. So uh, we can uh, deploy uh, many uh, technicians that has already have uh, basic knowledge of electricity and uh, with uh, a little bit more technical uh, training can be as the uh, uh, rooftop uh, technician for installer or for, uh, for designer and kind of thing. And also uh, local industry also has already available. We have in Indonesia about uh, 500 megawatt peak uh, solar uh, modules manufacturing that can serve uh, national uh, 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 demand. And also there are several uh, inverter uh, uh, company in Indonesia as well. So uh, there is also support from the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, all the stakeholders. Uh, a province uh, with high, subsidi uh, hubs high subsidize of electricity customer. This is going to be uh, the, the target of this uh, program, uh, as well as the province with high electricity generation costs, so, which also uh, could be uh, uh, help with, uh, reduce the generation cost with uh, uh, elect uh, electricity from uh, solar energy. And also this to fulfill the mandatory of our uh, general energy uh, 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 policies that mandating all the government governmental building and public building to have at least 30% of their rooftop area covered by solar photovoltaics. So this is gonna be a quite, uh, 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 opportunity for the solar rooftop uh, photovoltaic, as well as also our Ministry of uh, Housing and Public Works has a program of a million housing for our people. So, uh, in incorporating this million solar housing project with the solar PV rooftop will be a, a very a very uh, uh, a good uh, combination, not only to provide uh, people with uh, affordable housing, but also uh, electricity. And yeah, this is uh, other uh, regulation that uh, uh, support uh, 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 the, the, the program. And uh, finally, the benefit, of course, uh, by doing this program, hopefully at least per year, we can have 400 to uh, 500 uh, kilowatt peak each uh, company to install uh, in, in their rooftop of building or housing and kind of thing. So uh, in, 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 in accumulation, we expect to have one gigawatt per year. And uh, uh, we can retain uh, uh, 10 people per watt peak uh, of the uh, 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 manpower. 
we will also can absorb about 22,000 manpower per year per gigawatt. So uh, the, the benefit will be in a, in a several way. First, we can reduce the electricity subsidy because this is one kind of one-time investment of the, uh, of the, uh, of the government uh, for the, the people uh, to have their rooftop uh, photovoltaic. And um, after that, uh, the, the people uh, will have the electricity from the rooftop photovoltaic. But uh, the rooftop photovoltaic size will be higher rather than the, the, the consumption of its, its, its building. Then uh, we will have surplus of electricity that can be used by utility company for other purposes. So we uh, not only to reduce the electricity subsidy, but also to, to give more uh, income to the electricity company by selling this uh, uh, electricity from the solar rooftop. And also in the employment, uh, you know, Indonesia also suffer with uh, unemployment due to the, uh, the COVID. So hopefully this can uh, generate uh, employment opportunity up to 70,000 uh, employment per gigawatt for the whole uh, supply chains of the project. Also, we uh, we hope that this will help also the uh, the the the, comp the the government to achieve the uh, national target of the 6.5 gigawatt uh, uh, target uh, of the uh, energy mix in 2025, as well as also our commitment uh, for the uh, for reducing the uh, CO2 uh, by having about 1.5. 0.5 million ton per gigawatt reducing CO2, uh, having this uh, 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 solar rooftop installed in the whole country. I think that's uh, the information very brief, very short uh, uh, due to the limitation of time, but uh, we can explore with uh, question and answer and perhaps uh, you can also con uh, contact me uh, privately to have more uh, information and explanation of the uh, uh, situation of uh, the Indonesian solar energy industries. Thank you very much, uh, very much for your attention, and uh, back to you, Gianni. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Andika. Uh, you know, no worries, <laughs> no worries. All right. So you know, I was, uh, you know, after going through your presentation, I have. What what kind of opportunities? I'm sorry. Uh, you could you repeat the question? Yeah. I mean, uh, I get uh, difficulties too. Okay. So I'm saying that what what kind of opportunities do you see for the local companies in Indonesia, and opportunities for the global uh, conglomerates in the Indonesian market? All right. Market? All right. So uh, yeah, I haven't uh, put in my slide, but actually there are uh, there are several opportunity uh, for global company to come to Indonesia because uh, the one that uh, pref uh, have the privilege to use uh, local com local company is the if the budget coming from the government, but if it is a private company, for example. Uh, uh, Adidas, or, or sorry, uh, Nike, they want to, to put uh, 500 kilowatt peak of their uh, solar rooftop in their manufacturing, uh, uh, manufacture plan. So it is not necessarily to use local uh, product. It can also use uh, a global uh, product. So, and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, global company that need uh, renewable energy for uh, achieving their uh, renewable energy portfolio. So this also uh, uh, opportunity for the uh, 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 global company to come to, to Indonesia to serve this uh, portion of market. All right. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andika. I'm sure that you know, in Indonesia, solar industry is, is right now at a stabilizing stage. And Thank you. Uh, the transition comes in from coal. So that's, that's great to see the, the movement. All right, with this, uh, I think we move on to our next uh, presentation.
which will be from Mr. Sofan Farezi Farhan. Uh, welcome, Sofan. Yes, uh, people. Uh, you would be speaking on some of the challenges and opportunities of doing business in Southeast Asia's largest economy. So over to you, and uh, let's let's keep it in time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me start. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished speaker. Thank you, Pak Fipul Gulati. Uh, Mr. Andika from Indonesia and Association of the Solar already explained regarding the lot of opportunity uh, in solar uh, PV market in Indonesia and also the roadmap of this uh, solar PV in Indonesia. But refer also to the Mr. Doctor, sorry, Dr. Huyen from ACE. Uh, she is not uh, even mentioned that Indonesia is the for the country have a good prospect for the solar PV. I think it's the very very reasonable because we can see uh, from here what is the reason until now is the install capacity of the solar PV in Indonesia is very very low compared to the other country in ASEAN. So Indonesia is the world largest island country with more than 17,000 islands, and we are the 14th largest land country, and seventh largest combined sea and land area. And we are the fourth populous country with offer almost the 270 million people in 2019. So uh, even with the GDP, is the, in uh, 2015, we have the 857 billion, US dollar for the GDP and in 2019 is almost 1.1 trillion billion US dollar. So regarding the total final energy consumption in ASEAN, we are uh, more than 30% and uh, total property energy supply, we also more than 30% compared to the whole ASEAN country. And if we see in this solar energy potential and implementation, this is the forecast new solar capacity installed through 2020 uh, from the, the Lanto group. We, we will see that Indonesia is only have installed 325 megawatts for residential and utility scale compared to Malaysia, almost the four times from Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Philippines. That's the country is already explained by Dr. Hoi and Chan before. So, there is the interesting uh, for, for me and for my team to check what is the reason. The, the question is also, uh, I explained with uh, Mrs. Hoy and that, how to attract the, uh, the investment in Indonesia. So we can see that if we have the, the target uh, now, our current is only the 12% of new renewable energy share compared to another, the whole uh, uh, power generation from the oil, natural gas, and coal. And in 2025, we have the 23%, the target. From the 12% to the 23%, this is include the hydro. So I think in new, uh, uh, except the hydro is very, very low. And uh, uh, there is the three reason we, we see uh, for uh, the reason why is the gap is very, uh, very high, and I think almost uh, very tough, almost impossible to achieve 23% in 2025. There is the regulation problem, uh, unworkable project requirement, and financial problem. This is all in the same package. Why it should be the balance between the buyer and the seller. So. We, we, there is there, there is there, there is there is no seller there is no investor if the regulation is is not uh, attractive the project requirement is not workable and financial problem it we kill, we will discuss regarding the scalable project so i think there is uh, we discuss with the ministry of energy and mineral resources they also i think it's a bit pessimistic if we do the business as usual we only receive uh, do, uh, the around the 12 percent even in uh, currently in 2025, and even the uh, 2030, we only have the 12% for renewable energy. 
It should be the intervention scenario to achieve the 23% and 26% in 2030. But uh, what is the intervention scenario? We still wait from government, the real, I mean, the real regulation, the real stimulus, even the opportunity that set by Mr. Andika is very huge. Indonesia is very huge opportunity, but it should be uh, support by the, I mean, the, I mean, the regulation, the interest and stimulus from government uh, also. So the first is we see the solar regulation problem in Indonesia. <clears throat> the first of all, in the minister regulation number 17, uh, 2013, we will see there is the there is the fit, fit in tariff introduction. There is the price cap is around the 25 cents until 30 cents. It depends on local content here. But in this uh, regulation, the problem is the there is not really clear regarding the, I mean the uh, contract duration. So it should be B to B. So still uncertainty here. And in 2016. The, the tariff already declining to be the 14 until 25. But in this situation, there is some uh, reluctance from the utility government state owned PLN that uh, they cannot buy the electricity with this price because it should be compared to the local generation cost for each area of the PLN of the, each uh, province in Indonesia. So they change again in the 2017 regulation number 12 and uh, updated by regulation number 50 2017 that all the tariffs should be for the solar PV should be 15 percent lower than local uh, generation costs. So uh, we will see uh, after this slide how much the local generation cost. It will be ranged until uh, 4.8 cents until 14 cents depending on the location. And uh, the problem also that uh, at this time, there is, uh, they issued the new regulation regarding the contract, it should be BOT, build, own, operate, and transfer, including land acquisitions. So uh, we will explain and give you some uh, simulation. What is the impact for the investor for this regulation? And uh, in the, 2018, uh, number 49 regulation, they also introduced regarding the parallel charge. I will explain. But, but in uh, 2019 and 2020, there is some improvement, revision and improvement from government. So we still have a hope. The last regulation, number four, 2020, is uh, issued in uh, the uh, February, the last minute before we have the lockdown for the COVID-19. We'll see that this is the average government cost, generating cost uh, for the power plant. And we see that all the, the local generating cost, the solar PV should be 15% lower than that. And this is uh, the lower price, the lower uh, local generation cost, no, normally they have the big demand. It's like the Sumatra and Java Island. There's a big demand for the electricity. They have the low uh, local, uh, local generating cost for electricity. But the higher local generating cost for the higher city is, the, is in the island in the east of Indonesia, they have the problem with the infrastructure. Infrastructure is very, uh, uh, the road, the port, as not well developed it as the Java and Bali Island with the least higher project cost. So it's very hard for investor even to invest in the uh, East Indonesia if uh, they have the higher, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the tariff will be higher, but the demand is low and the infrastructure is un underdeveloped compared to another island like Java, Sumatra, and Bali, Indonesia. And this is the parallel chart illustration. So in the regulation number 49, uh, 2018, we have the parallel charts. It's mean that if you have the industry and you want to install the, let's say the, uh, I mean the 10 megawatts in your rooftop, 
So you have to pay the government state-owned electricity, PLN, 40 hours, multiply by the capacity. Without nothing, I mean, you have to pay this uh, 28,000 until 40,000 uh, refer to your uh, billing tariffs. Uh, just for the standby uh, for the PLN to back up your electricity, something like that. But this is already revised in with the regulation number 16, uh, 2019. Uh, the parallel charge uh, reduced to, do, to be the five hours. So this is, it looks like more reasonable now for the, the industry to install the rooftop in their factory. We also compare to the Malaysia, I mean the highest install capacity in the ASEAN, they have the regulation is more attractive and well planned compared to Indonesia. So from 2011 until 2015, they have the market creation, they have the fifth tariff here, so almost uh, 14 megawatts. And 2016 until 2020, market expansion already, so they have the auction for the large scale. And 2018 onwards, new market-based policy trial. So they try to net metering, peer-to-peer -peer trading pilot project, and another auction for the big scale of the portfolio. So this is, I think this is the one reason why the Malaysia is have the higher install capacity compared to Indonesian market now. And uh, the other uh, unworkable project requirement, this is also the one reason, the second reason why the install capacity uh, is low. First of all, just we see the regulation from government BOT scheme. This is the we have the risk associated with land acquisition regarding the price, social unrest, and everything, and doesn't provide guidance regarding the valuation of land, how much the land, the price, the standard land, and uh, BOT increasing upfront cash requirement by rules out operate to list land. We cannot list the land because the land should be given to the PLN after the end of contract. Local content regulation is good, but uh, also make the higher uh, investment if we compare to the, if we buy from the outside from no local content. But explained by Mr. Andika before that, if you are the factory industrial, you can do following this local content regulation, but you should be careful just with the parallel charge and emergency charge with PLN. This is the just illustration. Uh, if you want to make the IPP in Bali Island, everybody know the Bali, you have the 10 megawatt 20 years. Let's say the solar investment, you have the 10 megawatt multiply the 800,000 per megawatt. But you have the land acquisition, if we assume the 10,000 square meter per megawatt, and you have to multiply uh, with Bali, in Bali is around, let's say, a fresh 100 US dollar per square meter. So you need the 10 million for the land, 8 million for the solar power investment. And our APP price should be 18% than current cost in Bali. Now the Bali is 6.8 cents maximum. So you have minus this the, with 15%. So it's very hard to get the, I mean, the economical project. End of contract, we have to transfer power plant, including the land. The land price will be increased significantly, how much, much higher compared to the solar power investment. But this is a re repassed by the regulation uh, back to BO scheme in February 2020. And the last, I think, the financial problem. The problem is not, uh, I mean, the problem is the sufficient size. So we have we did the large scale project to, uh, I mean, to get the low interest rate. If we do the lower 10 megawatts, uh, something like that, it should be the, go to traditional corporate finance. You have to have the 30%, 40% equity and with the higher uh, interest rate. That's the problem for economical project. Finally, we have the opportunities. I think Pa Andika already explained a lot of uh, opportunities in Indonesia, but improvement the regulation, I already explained before. And we have the draft of new precedent regulation regarding new renewable energy will change the tariff to be the FITIM tariff. Uh, it is already implemented in waste to energy. And Indonesia is a huge population with 200, more than 250 million big market for industrial and industrial rooftop. And we have still the low consumption of the energy for, for, the, for every people. We st I think still the 800 
kilowatt hours per year compared to in the European or other country is already 5,000 to 6,000 kilowatt hours per, per year. And climate change, green energy awareness is increased in younger generation. I think this is the, I think, I, I believe the younger generation in Indonesia is very aware regarding the Paris Agreement, green energy and everything. This is the huge opportunity in Indonesia. I think thank you for me, Mr. Fipul Gulati. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Sofan. Uh, you know, quickly one, one question to you. <coughs> do you. Do you foresee any new policies uh, which are going to be coming up, uh, which makes, uh, you know, acquisition of land or licenses easy in the ASEAN PV market? So, sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah, I'm saying, do you, do you foresee any new policies which, uh, which are going to be coming out uh, yeah. in the ASEAN PV markets primarily? Uh, sorry, so I mean, do you mean the uh, policy for the acquisition of the land? Yes. Yes, yes there, there is a, uh, uh, with the new regulation, we don't have the acquisition of the land. We just uh, we can uh, the, can the rental the rent or something like that. So at least we are not include this in the capex. That could be in the opex something like that. So the our price electricity more competitive compared if we buy the land acquisition. Okay. All right. And uh, you know, before before I let you go, just quickly, you know, a, a quick take. Uh, do you do you foresee a trend in the ASEAN PV markets moving from large scale solar to floating and rooftop? Do you see that as a trend happening across all the PV markets? I think, uh, yeah, I think in Indonesia, like explained, Miss Mitter Andika, the, the floating market uh, is the one of the solution uh, for the land problem in Indonesia. But the other problems is the uh, I think the capex is more higher compared to the rooftop and anything else. If you want to to go to the it's like the I mean the uh, some area some area is regarding almost at the mountain, so you have to bring the all the installation is is higher higher. But land acquisition is is almost zero for that. I agree. It 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 will, it, it will be. Uh, the good opportunity in Indonesia because a lot of the the land, uh, I mean, uh, from uh, as it from the mining company, they don't use the big big land, and we can use this and also some uh, complementary with the hydro power for the for the water. Oh. great! Thank you, thank you, Sofan, for this uh, insightful presentation. Thank you very much.